In 1981, Kate, a 99-year-old girl, faces relentless bullying at school due to her struggles with a speech impediment. Termed the quiet girl by her tormentors, she endures their taunts. One day, she hears mysterious voices calling out to her from the field. The scene shifts to Kate, lying low amidst the field's expanse before rising and heading home, surrounded by the sounds of cows and farm animals. Upon entering the house, she's drawn to a baby's cry, leading her to her room where she gazes at a wetted mattress. As she hears the door slam shut, she hurriedly hides under the bed. Her mother, Mary, enters, commenting on the mud on her shoes before moving away. Later, Mary engages in laundry chores while Kate and her three sisters gather around the table, discussing the impending birth of a calf coinciding with a baby's arrival. Kate quietly listens as her sisters start arguing about their classmate Fiona. When their father, Dan, enters, the girls fall silent, only to resume their hushed dispute about Fiona once he leaves for another room while their father smokes a cigarette. A moment later, the siblings hurry as they hear the bus horn, quickly checking their lunch boxes only to find them empty. They complain to their dad, Dan, about their mom not preparing lunches. Dan suggests they grab some bread, leaving the girls grumbling while Kate remains silent. At school, Kate struggles with reading, in stark contrast to her seatmate, Sabrina, who reads proficiently. During lunch, while most children play outside, Kate stays inside with a few others due to her lack of food. She eyes a thermos on Sabrina's table, and discreetly pours herself a cup. But as two classmates rush past, they accidentally spill the milk on her, prompting Kate to rush to the washroom to clean up. On her return, a group of girls notices her stained clothes, causing Kate to flee into the open field. Later, her father picks her up, and they share a quiet ride home. Dan briefly stops at a small pub for a drink while Kate waits on the couch. When they resume the journey, silence pervades the car until they pass a woman in a yellow dress. Dan pulls over, and the woman joins them in the passenger seat. To mask their conversation, Dan turns up the radio while Kate remains quiet in the back, fiddling with her fingers throughout the night. Kate wakes up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom, overhearing her parents in conversation. Her mother inquires about her cousin Evelyn's plans to accommodate Kate, questioning if it's acceptable for Kate to return after the baby's arrival. Her father agrees, indicating that they can keep Kate as long as necessary, frustrating her mother. Abruptly, he dismisses her, claiming she always speaks her mind, and storms off to their bedroom, slamming the door shut. The following day, Kate encounters the mailman who hands her a letter. Upon arriving home, she informs her mother about the letter. Her mother, fighting back tears, instructs Kate to place it on the table. After composing herself, Mary sits down and reads the letter with a grave expression. Later, Kate is outside, dressed and waiting, as her father retrieves a suitcase and stows it in the car's trunk. Her mother calls out to her siblings, announcing Kate's departure, but her father's impatience prompts him to declare they're leaving immediately. Kate sits quietly in the back seat as her father drives in silence until he tunes the radio. After a moment, he turns to her and mentions, Waterford. Kate inquires if that's their destination, but her father remains silent, focusing solely on driving and the radio. She dozes off and wakes to the warm sunlight. Looking out, she sees lush greenery around but gets no response from her father when she asks where they are. Soon they arrive at a vast mansion belonging to the Cine Locks, her mom's cousin and her husband's family. Her father heads straight for Simon, her mom's cousin's husband. Kate watches from the back seat, surprised when the door on her side opens. It's her mother's older cousin, Evelyn, greeting her warmly. Evelyn asks Kate to stand so she can take a good look at her. They exchange a few words, and Evelyn smiles, adjusting Kate's hair as she leads her inside. They make their way to the kitchen where Evelyn inquires about Kate's mother. Kate mentions her mother winning prize bonds, and they had jelly. When asked if her mother is busy, Kate replies that she's waiting for men to come cut the hay. Evelyn frowns, remarking that they are late in cutting the hay. The young girl suddenly inquires about any other kids in the house. Evelyn smiles and explains that she and Simon are the only residents. Shortly after, two men enter the kitchen. Dan greets Evelyn and settles down while Simon and Evelyn prepare the table. Dan engages in light conversation, but when Evelyn prompts Simon to greet their guests, Simon only mentions that Kate is alone. This prompts Evelyn to remark that Kate is more than just a reference. Dan shifts the topic, discussing this year's hay. Evelyn interjects, inquiring about Mary's progress. Dan mentions Mary's nearing due date, and when Evelyn presses further about any difficulties, Kate's father shares that feeding poses a challenge. He adds that a child's hunger is insatiable. Evelyn responds, saying Kate is growing and Dan suggests making Kate work for her food. Simon steps in, 
stating that Kate doesn't need to work. Evelyn concludes, warmly welcoming Kate. Dan tries to caution them, hinting that his daughter might eat them out of house and home. There's a brief silence until Kate mentions she needs to use the restroom. After they finish eating, Dan announces his departure, citing the long drive back. Simon questions his rush, to which Dan explains. Evelyn stands, stating she'll be back. The table falls silent again until her return, offering Dan a handful of rhubarb for Mary. However, Kate's father takes it indifferently. Outside, Dan carelessly tosses the rhubarb on the car's back seat, immediately starting the engine. Before driving off, Kate's father advises her to behave and avoid the fire. Evelyn notices Kate's suitcase still in the car and rushes inside, preparing a bath for the girl. Initially hesitant due to the water's heat, Kate eventually acquiesces as Evelyn assures her she'll get used to it. After cleaning up, Evelyn asks if it's all right for Kate to wear some of their old clothes temporarily, which Kate accepts. Sorting through the closet, Evelyn chooses a plaid shirt and pants. Kate mentions her mother's instruction to change pants daily, and Evelyn asks if there's anything else Mary said. Kate shares her mother's permission for Evelyn to keep her as long as she wants. Evelyn invites Kate to see the well, to which Kate hesitates, asking if it's a secret. Evelyn assures her that secrets aren't allowed in their house and that secrets breed shame. Holding Kate's face, Evelyn explains that she might not fully grasp it at her age. Hand in hand, they head to the well, where Evelyn instructs Kate to drink from the ladle. Later that night, Evelyn asks Kate if she wants some milk before heading upstairs. Kate recalls her mother's disapproval, and Evelyn respects her mother's wishes. Tucking Kate into bed, Evelyn checks on her well-being. Kate assures her she's fine, so Evelyn asks about her mother. Kate mentions her mother's frequent vomiting, which has lessened recently. Concerned, Evelyn questions why the hay hasn't been cut. Kate reveals her mother's financial struggles preventing payment for the labor. Worriedly, Evelyn ponders if wiring money to Mary might offend her, acknowledging her father's potential anger. Sometime later, Kate wakes up in the middle of the night, feeling the need to use the chamber pot under her bed. Hearing footsteps, she quickly pretends to be asleep. She overhears Evelyn commenting on her situation, mentioning that she wouldn't allow her own child to sleep in a stranger's home. The next morning, Kate is already awake, gazing out the window when Evelyn enters to tidy her bed. Noticing that the bed is wet, Evelyn doesn't scold Kate. During breakfast, Evelyn suggests to Simon the idea of taking Kate along to work so she can see the farm. Simon explains that the day's work would be tough, but he hints that maybe Kate could join them next time. Left alone, Evelyn and Kate spend time together, doing household chores. Evelyn teaches Kate how to chop vegetables and clean while caring for her. This routine continues for several days, and as they bond, Kate stops wetting the bed. One day, Kate successfully wakes up dry, and Evelyn looks at her proudly, remarking that she only needs a little guidance after all. One morning during breakfast, a call disrupts their routine, and Evelyn mentions she's needed to assist their friend Sophia. This means Kate will be under Simon's care for the day. Curious about Evelyn's departure, Kate keeps asking questions. Simon explains it's their friend's daughter who needs help. Quickly heading to work at the farm, Simon later realizes Kate is missing. Worried, he searches until he finds her in one of the sheds. Scolding her unintentionally, his raised voice frightens Kate, causing her to flee. That night, as Simon bids her good night, he can't shake the guilt over his earlier behavior. The following day, before heading to work, Simon leaves a piece of macaron on the table for Kate. As he resumes farm work, he notices Kate eventually joining him while he's scrubbing the floors. One day, Simon asks Kate to check the mailbox for any letters. Initially hesitant, she eventually agrees when he suggests timing her sprint, turning it into a playful activity. Over time, it becomes their little routine. Later on, there's a moment when Kate and Evelyn are busy making red gooseberry jam together. Simon enters and interrupts Evelyn, insisting that Kate can't attend mass in her current attire. Despite Evelyn's defense of Kate's neat appearance, Simon remains firm and instructs Kate to clean up and change. He tells Kate to at least wash her hands and face before they head to town. While in town, Simon gives Kate some money to buy herself a chalk ice, though Evelyn criticizes the amount, suggesting Kate could get more for the money. Simon defends his decision, questioning the purpose of bringing Kate if they can't indulge her, earning a smile from Evelyn. At a store, the saleswoman suggests Kate try on a yellow dress, much to Evelyn's delight. However, she's encouraged to try on a blue dress as well. After shopping, they rush back home, only to find Sophia waiting with news of her father's passing. Simon leaves immediately to assist Sophia's family, while Evelyn informs Kate about the concept of funerals, ensuring she won't be afraid. 
Later, they visit Sophia's house to pay respects to her father. Initially, Kate mistakes Sophia's father's gesture as praying due to the rosary in his hands. Evelyn encourages Kate to offer a prayer for him as well. Later, Kate finds herself sitting alone and bored when a neighbor offers to watch over her while the couple stays to assist. However, the woman turns out to be nosy, bombarding Kate with numerous questions. From inquiries about kitchen ingredients to the dog's sleeping spot and their stocked fridge, the woman finally probes into where Kate sleeps. Uncomfortably, she reveals that Kate's room belonged to the couple's late son, who tragically passed away in an accident at the slurry pit. This revelation disturbs Kate. When they arrive at the woman's house, Simon quickly arrives to take Kate back home. Sensing something amiss in Kate's behavior, it takes a while before she confides in them about the woman's disclosure regarding their late son. Upon returning home, Evelyn retreats to their room, while Simon fetches Kate a coat, indicating they're going out. Simon brings Kate to a secluded shore, where they sit together. He initiates a conversation about horses at sea before apologizing for Evelyn's behavior. He assures Kate that Evelyn didn't intend any harm. Through their conversation, they grow closer, especially Simon, who begins to treat Kate like the daughter he never had. In a serene morning, Simon asks Kate to fetch the mail, where she discovers a letter from Mary addressed to Evelyn. Reading it aloud, Evelyn learns that Kate's mother wants her back now that she's given birth, and school is starting the next day. Simon heads off to help a friend birth a calf, requesting Evelyn to finish up at the farm, though Evelyn urges him to go. Kate recalls the lack of water, and decides to fetch some from the well, but she accidentally falls in. Fortunately, she only catches a cold. As she starts recovering, the three visit Kate's house, where they're met with general indifference. They engage in conversation with Mary over tea until the baby cries, and Mary returns carrying the infant. Dan arrives later, causing tension in the room, leading to a strained conversation. After a while, Simon decides it's time to leave. Before departing, Dan scolds Kate for sneezing. The couple gives provisions to Mary, and Simon hands her a crate of jams. As they drive away, Kate runs after them. Spotting her, Simon hugs her tightly before closing the gate. Evelyn sits in the car, tearful. Seeing her dad marching angrily toward them, Kate softly mutters, Daddy, while hugging Simon tightly. It's the first time she has called someone Daddy.